A ticket aboard the Titanic? Someone is determined to recreate that journey. One of Australia's richest men, he's also one of the most outspoken. But what he loves even more than a good stoush is a grand idea, and his latest is Titanic. Titanic 2, to be precise. Meet Clive Palmer, one of Australia's wealthiest and most outspoken men. I'm funding this myself, because I, I want to spend the money I've got before I die. Whose passion for grand ideas surpasses even his considerable wealth. His latest venture, Titanic 2. As whispers circulate about Titanic 2, a replica of the original we find our ourselves with one question. Will this bold project navigate the currents of skepticism to set sail in 2024? Or will it remain a wistful dream? Join this exploration as we explore the destiny of the Titanic's legacy in the 21st century, the revival of the Titanic. For some individuals, the idea of constructing a replica of the Titanic and sending it into the open seas amidst a flurry of publicity might, might seem like the epitome of hubris a daring challenge to tempt fate. However, in 2012, Clive Palmer, the outspoken Australian billionaire who invested millions of dollars from his personal fortune into the Titanic II project envisioned a grander future. Beyond a single replica in his perspective, the years ahead would have witnessed an entire fleet of Titanics navigating the waters. Each of these would have recreated the experience of the ill-fad original ship that met its demise after colliding with an iceberg in the North Atlantic as the legend goes, the Armist Titanic constructed by Harland and Wolfe in Belfast, struck an iceberg and sank on April 15, 1912, resulting in the tragic loss of over 1,500 passengers and crew. Despite the tragic end, the Titanic endured an unusual afterlife, after all, it became the most famous shipwreck in history in, in April 2012. Palmer introduced a new venture named Blue Star Line, a deliberate homage to the original Titanic company, White Star Line. The announcement of Titanic 2 took place during a news conference on the 100th anniversary of the original Titanic's doomed maiden journey from Southampton, England to New York City. At the time of the announcement of Titanic 2, Palmer expressed his hope stating that after 100 years, people will reflect in time and say that they're building Titanic 4 and Titanic 5 in memory of the people who built Titanic 2. Palmer's aspirations for the Titanic captured global attention as he progressively unveiled more details of his ambitious plan. Titanic 2 was set to be constructed in a Chinese shipyard, a symbolic shift from the original's origins in Belfast's docks, reflecting the evolution of the world. According to Palmer, the decision to build the ship was a straightforward one. His substantial mining interests which have elevated him to one of the world's wealthiest individuals already tie him closely to the shipping industry, explaining the genesis of the idea he shared. That the initiation of this project came from his close relationship with Chinese shipyards. At the time they were building four of his ships and wanted to build passenger ships so it occurred to him that he should build the Titanic. However, Palmer's plans stirred a blend of astonishment and derision. Notably, he remained unfazed by it, characterized by his robust frame. Palmer casually dismissed some of the expected criticism surrounding the notion of resurrecting an unsinkable ship, notorious for being doomed in response to potential criticisms. He offered a perspective seasoned with humor and self-assurance. He elaborated on how there are more than 6 billion people today in the world. And if you worry about someone criticizing you on your every move, then it would become impossible to get out of bed. The world is still waiting to see Titanic 2. Apart from the criticism upon closer inspection, it becomes evident that Palmer, who is the son of Australian silent movie star George Palmer, holds a deep affection not just for the historical Titanic, but equally for James Cameron's cinematic rendition Instead of diving into the grim details of the Titanic disaster, marked by class-based horrors, where the affluent were saved while the less fortunate drowned Palmer aimed to cast Titanic II in the light of a symbol for love and unity. He spoke of it as if Cameron's fictional characters, the ill-fated lovers, Rose and Jack, were tangible figures. According to Palmer, Titanic II is a wonderful opportunity for everyone around the world to come together with an idea. And that idea is nothing but understanding and love. He also believes that this creation puts emphasis on the things that everyone has in common. Even if Palmer's fascination leans more towards the cinematic portrayal of Titanic than its historical reality, it doesn't diminish the potential success of his venture.
The allure of Titanic 2 was already apparent when the idea was announced over 40,000 people expressed interest in its maiden voyage, while some even offered up to a million dollars for a first-class cabin. Much like Cameron's experience, Palmer realized that people are drawn to the image of the Titanic, and within that image lies a significant business opportunity. Palmer candidly acknowledged that his interest is derived from ours, and everyone in the world is interested in the Titanic. Paramount Financial and Political Waves the stalling of Titanic II, the journey of Titanic II. From conception to its current state of uncertainty has been fraught with as many complexities as the waters its namesake once traversed the financial and political challenge. Alice that have beset Clive Palmer's ambitious project illustrate the formidable obstacles that can impede even the grandest of visions, financing. Such a colossal undertaking was the most immediate and enduring challenge. The initial cost estimates for Titanic 2's construction hovered around the $500 million mark, a figure that quickly escalated as the project's scope and scale became clearer. Palmer, despite his considerable wealth, sought external investors to shoulder the financial burden. However, the specialized nature of the project, coupled with its novelty and the risks associated with maritime ventures, made securing the necessary capital. A. Herculean task investor skepticism was not unfounded. The global financial climate in the years following Titanic II's announcement was one of recovery from the 2008 financial crisis. And potential backers were cautious about investing in projects that did not guarantee returns. The niche appeal of a replica, Ocean Liner. However, historically significant posed a significant question. Would there be enough sustained interest to make the venture profitable in the long term? the political arena posed its own set of challenges. Palmer, a polarizing figure in Australian politics, often found his business ambitions entangled with his political aspirations. His foray into the political landscape with the Palmer United Party were met with mixed reactions, and his outspoken nature often led to contentious public debates and media scrutiny. This notoriety impacted the Titanic II project with potential backers and partners wary of associating with a venture that could become embroiled in political controversy. Additionally, the international nature of the project added layers of complexity with the shipyard and many suppliers located in China. Titanic II became subject to the ES and flows of Sino-Australian relations, diploma tensions, trade disputes, and changes in foreign investment policies had a direct impact on the project's feasibility. The contractual disagreements that emerged between Palmer's Blue Star Line and the Chinese shipbuilding company were symptomatic of broader geopolitical undercurrents that could neither be easily navigated nor swiftly resolved. The project also faced legal headwinds. Accusations of misappropriated funds and legal disputes over payments brought negative attention to Palmer and by association to Titanic II. This legal maelstrom not only diverted Palmer's focus, but also raised doubts about the project's integrity and management, leading to a cooling of interest from potential sponsors and partners. The ambitious scale of Titanic. The Chinese replica too, meant that even minor setbacks had the potential to cause significant delays and cost overruns as deadlines slipped and promised. Milestones went unmet. The ripple effects were felt throughout the project's development the longer Titanic II remained docked in the realm of planning and promotion, the more the enthusiasm and confidence of investors, the public, and the media began to W in the Chinese replica, a competing vision as Clive Palmer's Titanic II project encountered turbulent seas. A parallel venture was quietly taking shape in the landlocked climes of Sichuan. China, this eastern replica far from the romanticized visions of transatlantic crossings, was a bold initiative to, to reconstruct the Titanic, not as a functioning ship but as a static museum and hotel, an homage to the historical legacy of the original. The concept was ambitious in its scope and intention. The full-scale replica was to be the centerpiece of the Roman DEA seven-star international cultural tourism resort promising visitors an immersive experience into the world of the early 20th century, the Chinese Titanic aimed to capture the elegance and detail of the original from the grandeur of the dining halls to the intricacies of the staterooms allowing guests to walk the decks and corridors of a ship. Frozen in time financially, the Chinese endeavor was underpinned by a different model, 
funded by a combination of local government interests and private investors. The project sought to capitalize on China's burgeoning domestic tourism industry. The replica was envisioned as a cultural and educational attraction one that could draw visitors from across the nation and beyond. However, the project was not without its controversies, the announcement of an iceberg. Collision experience raised ethical concerns and prompted a swift backlash leading to its cancellation. The sensitivity of such a simulation which seemed to trivialize the disaster was a stark reminder of the delicate balance between memorialization and entertainment. Despite these challenges, construction began in 2014 with optimism. The developers pledged that the exterior of the ship would be a faithful recreation built to full scale, measuring some 269 meters in length. The interior, while static, was to include replicas of the original's famous spaces, including the grand staircase, the swimming pool and the first-class cabin's progress was initially steady, with significant media coverage as the keel was laid, and the framework began to take shape. The developers released images and plans that captured the public's imagination, suggesting that the Titanic would once again be brought to life, albeit in a new form and context. Yet as with many grand projects, the Chinese replica faced its own set of challenges, construction delays, and financial hurdles. Slowed progress. Reports emerged of workers not receiving their full wages and periods of inactivity at the building site sparked rumors of financial instability. The ambition of the project began to clash with the practicality it is of its execution by 2021. The world had changed dramatically. The COVID-19 pandemic brought international travel to a near standstill, disrupting supply chains and investor confidence. The Chinese tourism industry, like many others worldwide, faced an uncertain future. These global shifts posed new questions for the viability of the Titanic replica as a tourist attraction. At a time when the industry was grappling with unprecedented, challenges the future of Titanic II, realistic dream or fantasy, the vision of Titanic II. Once, a beacon of historical revival and modern engineering synergy now flickers uncertainly on the horizon. This grandiose project designed to recreate the legendary Titanic stands at a crossroads between the realms of tangible achievement and unfulfilled fantasy. Examining the current state of Titanic II is a, a journey through a landscape of shifting ambitions and evolving narratives in the world of maritime remembrance and entertainment, as of the latest public disclosures. Titanic II remains in a state of suspended animation. The initial enthusiasm that greeted CVE Palmer's announcement has ebbed, leaving in its wake a series of unmet deadlines and promises the shipyard where Titanic II was to be constructed lies quiet without the anticipated clamor of industry that was to herald the crafting of this modern marvel. The silence speaks volumes, signaling the myriad challenges that have left the project adrift. The likelihood of Titanic II's completion hinges on a complex interplay of factors with financial viability at the forefront. Despite Palmer's reassurances and intermittent reassertions of commitment, the absence of tangible progress casts a long shadow over the project's future. The investment required to bring Titanic II to life is immense, and the economic uncertainties of the post-pandemic world have done little to steady the waters. The question remains whether there is sufficient appetite among investors and the public to pour resources into a venture that is as much a historical homage as it is a modern commercial enterprise beyond the financial considerations. The implications of Titanic II's potential completion or its failure resonate on multiple levels if realized. Titanic II would be a testament to humanity's enduring fascination with the past and its desire to capture and relive historical moments. The ship would offer a unique blend of education and experience allowing passengers to step back in time while enjoying the comforts and assurances of modern technology. It would also serve as a floating memorial to the original Titanic, a tribute to the lives lost and the lessons learned from one of history's most poignant maritime disasters. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss an update. Your support means the world to us and it helps the channel grow. Subscribe now for more Infinity History goodness. Stay tuned and let's embark on this exciting journey together.